welcome back everyone it is your girl cassandra olivia and i am back with yet another makeup tutorial this was a new client and she was generous enough to allow me to record me doing her transformation a little bit of background about her she doesn't live in delaware but she came to visit and she decided to book with me so shout out to you girl because i really appreciate you coming through and just coming to sit in my chair and be an awesome client um she let me know that she does not wear makeup a lot <clears throat> excuse me but she was letting me know that her birthday was coming up, I believe. So she wanted to do something nice. I can't remember if it was her birthday or anniversary. I feel like it was her birthday. So if I forgot, please forgive me. But I literally did this makeup look two months ago. And I'm just now getting around to editing and posting it. But she had an event nonetheless. And I just wanted to go in and give her a natural makeup look. She did show me a picture. It was something really simple. It was like a really nude, um, natural cut crease with a little bit of like a smoky effect. So we're just going to go in and create this look on her today so for every client i do make sure that i have hand sanitizer in my makeup kit and also in the salon i do sanitize my hands off camera and i do that about five minutes prior to me touching her face just so that way when i'm touching around her eyes especially she's not going to be sensitive so my hands are sanitized and my tools are clean always you guys know that but you just want to make sure that um if you can use disposable makeup items so my makeup brush and everything as far as my um what is this what am I doing? Her brow pencil, that cannot be sanitized because it is a brow pencil, but I make sure to spray it with 99% alcohol when I'm done and just to wipe everything off, okay? So I went in with my ColourPop Bang & Brunette brow pencil and I just went in and filled in her brows to her natural shape. And of course I added a little bit more arch to them. And then I'm just going in now with my P. Louise base in the shade number four and I'm just going in and just carving out her brow area and also setting her lid. So that way when I'm ready to place her eyeshadows, they will sit and they will be more vibrant and they will stick all day. No matter if she's dancing, sweating, jumping in the pool, whatever the case may be, I wanna make sure that her makeup is going to last because she's not gonna be able to get it touched up. So I'm just gonna do one eye first. And then after I'm done this eye, I'll go in and do the second eye. This brush that I'm using is also from the crayon case. This is a concealer brush that I got in a kit that came on her website. So shout out to you, Supa, because first of all, she follows me on the gram, but she also follows me on YouTube. And I was fangirling. This was like months and months ago, but still the fact that big businesses recognize me, I just have to shout you out, girl. Love the crayon case products. And you guys will see me using a, a plethora of black owned businesses whether it's crayon case julia's place beauty bakery i try to make sure that i use as many black owned brands as i can but i also try to make sure that my kit is also high end and affordable so i have anything ranging from drug drugstore products all the way up into high end products i like to have a mix in my kit because you just don't know what the client prefers and i like to have a range of different things to try out it doesn't necessarily have to be super cheap or super expensive but you just want to make sure that you have a variety of products in your kit just for different clients different skin types and tones and things like that so definitely want to shout out suit because crayon case products i started buying her products when she first first came out years ago like two three years ago when she first came out with her first highlighter and it's been a wrap ever since like still to this day i love her products so shout out to you soup and that's completely off topic but i had to let it be known because i love supporting black owned businesses especially black boss women who handle their business and do it professionally with a little bit of hood like that's why i love soup because she's herself but she also is about her business, you feel me? So we gotta be supportive when it comes to supporting other businesses. I feel like a lot of us as black owned businesses or women owned businesses, we just don't like to shout out other people. And that is not the case with me. Like I'm the first person to shout out somebody, especially if they're about their business, okay? So now I'm going in with the Juvia's Place palette and I'm using those brown shades that you guys saw me tap into. The first one was in the top, um, the top, row of the palette and then the second shade that i used was in the bottom row so i mixed that lighter brown with the darker brown i did start off with the lighter brown first just to build up a little bit of shadow on her eyes so that way when i do add the darker brown it'll blend a little bit better 
I'm trying to explain this to the best of my ability, so I do apologize if it's not making sense. But you guys already know. You can comment down below, DM me, email me. I'm a super, super friendly YouTuber, I guess. I'm not one of those people that's not going to respond. I try to as best as I can. So if you guys have any questions, just make sure that you reach out to me, okay? That's what I'm here for. So I'm just going in, blending out her eyeshadows, and I'm going to literally do this one eye first, and then I will start to cut her crease. Once I'm done, I will do the second eye, and then I will come back and break down what I'm doing as well. Also, while I remember, the thing that I'm using to cut her crease is just that same concealer brush in the P. Louise base that I used prior to doing her eyeshadow. I'm just going in with that same exact base and I like to tap it on the eyelid just to make sure I get a nice and even line. If you make the cut crease line too low, you can just widen it and just extend it out. If for whatever reason you make the cut crease too big and it's like over top of where her natural lid opens up, you can always go in with a small detail brush and just reapply whatever um, eyeshadows that you apply on the lid, if that makes sense. So if I were to make her cut crease way too big and it's like going towards her brow, do not fret. You can always just go back in with a blending brush, with a small detail brush, and just reapply the first couple shades that you use on the lid just to clean it up a bit, okay? So I never overthink when I do cut creases. I just have fun with it. I look at the client. And for whatever reason it's not even, I will just go in and clean it up, extend it, um, do what needs to be done. But I like to keep it moving. If I feel like if you sit on one area too long on the face, you overthink it, and that's how you end up messing up tremendously. So if one eye looks good, I will keep it moving. I'll do the next eye. If the next eye is not quite matching, I'll say, hey, do I need to extend this? Do I need to make it smaller? And then I will go in and do my little fixes. That makes the process so much easier. And it makes it to where I'm still having fun doing what I love, but I'm not overthinking it, if that makes sense. So again, I'm just cutting her crease. And then once I'm done cutting her crease, I'm going to add on that shade, that shimmery, I don't know if it's like a champagne, goldy, silvery shade. I don't know. I'm going to add that on top of her lid afterwards. Then I'm going to apply some lashes from High Profile Hair. You guys know these are my absolute favorite lashes, not only because she's my friend, but because these literally are some bomb ass lashes. Like I can use these lashes over and over and over again. Like every picture that you see me use this year has been 99.9% .9 High Profile Lashes. And I love the fact that she sells me lashes. They're about five to $8 in range, but you can wear them up to 10 times or more if you make sure that you sanitize them, wipe them down, you clean them, let them air dry, they will last you a long time, okay? So invest in some good lashes. So what I'm doing here now, again, I'm trying to figure out what lashes to put on her. She let me completely freestyle to the point where she was like, do what you want, do what you think looks amazing. I really love when clients come in and allow me to be creative. It just really gets the juices flowing and really brings back that excitement that I have when I wanted to do hair or makeup and this is really just something that i'm like okay you want me to do me like that's the best type of client for me personally because i love thinking outside the box i love trying new things i love playing around with just pushing my limits okay so don't be scared to try new things worst case scenario i always tell my clients hey i'm gonna do me if they let me freestyle and if you do not like it that is fine just let me know we can always change it again it's hair and makeup it's not permanent so we can always go in and change it okay so now i'm just going to do the same thing to the second eye and i'll be back as soon as i'm done
So right here, now I'm just going in with that darkest brown shade mixed with that red shade that I used previously just to darken the outer portion of her eyes, just to make them a little bit more smoked out. So that when she opens up, it gives you just a little bit more drama, okay? So I like to go in and just add a little bit of razzle dazzle on there. This is completely optional, but I knew she was going out later tonight. So this is really gonna pop when she's out and it's darker out and the, the background is right when she's dressed up. It's really gonna be like the centerpiece of her outfit. It's gonna be the thing that makes people stare at her all night and they're trying to figure out what the heck is it about her. It's the makeup, honey, like the makeup is about to be slayed, okay? So I'm just gonna finish applying her makeup. And now I'm just going in with some foundation. I actually use my drugstore foundation for her. I'm not 100% sure which one I use. It's either 338 or 332 in the Maybelline Fit Me. I will drop that down in the description once I look in a second. But I'm just going in and her skin was super, super clear. So the better the client's skin is, the better the makeup will look. So if you have a client that has very clear skin, the makeup is just gonna go on and it's gonna glide like butter. If you have a client that has hyperpigmentation or acne, it's gonna go on smooth also, but you just have to go in and color correct and make sure that there's no like lumps and bumps and texture. Um, clients do have texture in their skin, it's a natural thing, but you just wanna make sure that you try to accentuate and make sure that their features look amazing. If you have a client that has a lot of texture in their skin, or a lot of blemishes, you wanna stay away from like highlighting and over um, exaggerating the face because then that will bring more light to the areas that you wanna kind of conceal, if that makes sense. So I'm just going in with some foundation and concealer, and then I'm gonna go in with my Juvia's Place translucent powder, and I'm gonna set under her eyes. And I literally used a minimal amount of powder for this client. The reason being, I knew she was gonna go out for the night, so what I decided to do was apply a little powder to my beauty blender, and then I just dabbed it under her eyes, but I pressed it into the skin. So I'm not baking, I'm not dusting anything away, I'm actually gonna let the powder sit into her face and then melt once I spray on her setting spray. I'm sitting here looking at this like, this girl looks so damn pretty. Like, I'm so proud of myself. Like, my makeup skills have come a long way. So now I'm just going in with the Fenty Beauty. Uh, Beauty, oh my God. I'm going in <laughs> with the Fenty Beauty. I was thinking of Huda Beauty, and I tried to say Fenty, and I said Beauty. So just, <laughs> just disregard. But I'm going in with my Fenty Beauty Mocha Mommy, and I'm just going in and just contouring her face just a little bit with a little bit of powder. Nothing too crazy or too harsh. I try not to overly contour or highlight when I have new clients, especially clients who don't wear makeup, because sometimes when you look at themselves, they're like, oh my God, like I'm too snatched or I'm too bright or I'm too whatever. So I still try to keep it pretty natural and pretty, but I just want to make her look super slick and super neat, if that makes sense. So she's loving it, I'm loving it. Now I'm just going in with my crayon case palette, and this is just a box of crayons palette. And I'm going in with that black shade and I'm using that to smoke out her outer line. Once I'm done this, I'll do the same thing to the other eye and then I'll add a little bit of mascara just to bring everything together. I'll dust away anything that needs to be dusted away, do her lip and she is pretty much good to go, okay? So 
on here, you just see me dusting away some of that fallout that I got. But because she has a powder stain on her face, it literally dusted away perfectly. There's no black, there's no residue, there's no fallout from the eyeshadow, which is another reason why I like to do the powder prior. But again, do what works for you, okay? So now I'm just going in with a lip liner that I got from my local beauty store. This is in like a dark brown slash cocoa shade, I believe. It's no specific brand. It's really like an off-brand $2 lip pencil. So use whatever you feel like using. And I'm just going to line her lips with this dark brown. And then I am going to go in with my Beauty Bakery in the shade. I like the Chai Chai. And I believe it was Trace. Is it Trace Leches or Dolce the Leches? Something like that. It was one of those shades. But I'm going in with a pinkish shade and a brown shade. And I'm just going to have her keep blotting her lips until everything blends out seamlessly. I was going for a very nude and natural looking lip without doing the most, okay? So I like to do ombre lips on 90% of my clients. They just allow me to, so I just, I'm going to keep doing it until you tell me not to. But I like to ombre like a dark brown with a pink or a dark brown with a light brown just to create a little bit of warmth and also to make her lips look really glossy and sexy yet natural, okay? So now that we're doing this, I'm going to add a little bit of gloss on top. And then I'm also going to add on some gloss from my girlfriend High Profile in the shade. Oh my goodness, don't have me lying. I'm going to take it down below. I know my girlfriend, she started selling lip gloss and I cannot remember the shade. I think it was something like hot cocoa or hot chocolate or something in that nature. But I'm just going to go ahead and line her lips with that. Once I'm done doing her lips completely and then we are pretty much finished the look. So thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, listening to me talk. I really miss being on here and posting. So I'm gonna try my best to be as consistent as possible. So now I'm just going in with a little bit of highlighter and I am gonna dust that away because I felt like I added on a little bit too much. So I apply it and then I'm just going in with a brush that has nothing on it. I'm just dusting that away ever so slightly and then surely will be all done. So shout out to you guys. Thank you guys so much for your love and support throughout the years. I cannot wait to bring you guys more makeup and hair content. Please drop down any video suggestions that you have below. And I'm Audi. I will see you guys in the next video. Let me know if you like this makeup transformation. And I will catch you guys later. Bye.